The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Warren Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendricks. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. Here on the floor of the Fargo Dome, just wrapping up the cadet finals on, uh, what is it, day three here of the USA Wrestling Cadet and Junior Nationals with Jeff Reagan, Team Georgia coach, head freestyle coach for the state and uh, coach at Woodward Academy down there in Georgia. First of all, Jeff, good to see you, man. How you been? I've been great. How are you? Oh, I'm just uh, fat and happy. But uh, as we, we go through, cadets just ended as we started first. Uh, overall impressions of how Team Georgia did on the cadet side? I think uh, Team Georgia at the cadet side is a little young. Uh, but I'm really happy with what we have with that young group, and I know that's just going to build, especially since we have so many talented schoolboy kids coming up next year as we just won the schoolboy national title in Greco and runner-up in freestyle, so we're excited about where it's going to go soon. And you've got some kids that are with you at, at your school at Woodward since you got out of college coaching. You were a coach at the Citadel for a long time. You know, had a career wrestling at Oklahoma State, but what is it about getting into this level, coaching this level again, and, and really being able to develop high school kids so they go on to the next level and using freestyle and Greco as, as a vehicle for that? I think it's the most important thing that you can do, uh, whether you're a coach in college or you're a coach at any level, to recognize the importance of uh, freestyle and Greco as what is going to build success at the college level and internationally at this age, um, uh, even at the Citadel. You know, we had a club in Charleston, the Charleston Wrestling Club, which no longer exists, but, uh, you know, we coached dozens of uh, Fargo All-Americans, I think one of which uh, Jordan Wigger was a kid I trained since he was eight, and he went on to be a seven-time Fargo All-American. And it's just so exciting to watch those young kids grow and develop. And now I get to do it again in Atlanta, Georgia, as one of uh, our own at Woodward Academy, uh, who went 0-2 here last year uh, and started practicing uh, 360 days ago, and he was in the finals. So he made a lot of improvements, and it, it means a lot to get to see that uh, development of that hard work payoff. Now, where do you see that transition over for improvement on the folk style mats, which, again, high school state tournaments are, are a big thing to kids, and, you know, college coaches are looking here, but winning a state title and being able to compete for state championships is important. How do you think his performance from here is going to help him do that? Well, uh, especially in college, it's a, it's a 10, it's an 11-month, you know, career and, and then beyond, and, and the, the grind that you need uh, that, that really appeases to college coaches when they see not just a kid that's a multiple-time state champion but knows that they come out to this level and can compete with the best kids. Um, and I think it translates because of the confidence uh, also individually to say, you know, I, I've wrestled the best in the country. Uh, I, I know that, that Nick Masters, uh, our freshman at Woodward Academy, he went 65-2 and two this year, you know, won a state title. But at the same time, when, if we go to a big national tournament, he can say, hey, I beat three nationally ranked wrestlers in the last three days i can go with anybody in any tournament and that confidence pays off in december the work you're putting in in july and in, in june so uh confidence is huge when it comes to wrestlers what was it like for you getting acclimated to a new state i mean you've been with south carolina for a long time and obviously with the club as you mentioned in charleston but coming into georgia out of college coaching coaching high school and you know was it like a fresh start starting over again you know, actually, it's the most fun I've had in a long, long time. You know, Woodward Academy is the largest college preparatory school in the United States of America and uh, or continental U.S. I guess we, we count Hawaii. There's a school a little bigger there. But, um, you know, it really is uh, the support that, that I can get at somewhere uh, like Woodward Academy, just a prep school uh, and, and having a club and a middle school and a high school, being able to train year round and really work. Uh, whether it's freestyle Greco, uh, whether it's with our with our club, with our head club coach uh, Christian Flavin, or it's working with the high school guys, the middle school guys, it's 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 fun to really watch that development. Uh, but then the state as a whole, Georgia is so much. Uh, uh, they've got so much organization and, and individuals that really really love the sport, and it's so fun to be a part of. You know, getting a group of seven or eight coaches together to go go out and coach at school and nationals and, and be able to win that for the state, and then come out here with a great staff of you know, almost 20 coaches and, and volunteers to come out here and really work with these 60 kids. 
So I'm really, really excited. It's no longer just going up with South Carolina and having two coaches and six kids from our club and placing top 15 in, in, in Fargo. We really have a good group of kids uh, and coaches that all have the same agenda, which is to help the state, help the kids, and help see that those, those uh, opportunities uh, in college. And uh, I know Terry Allison and, uh, and, and uh, Link Davis – uh, as our lead cadet and lead junior coaches, you know, they've been doing this for, for oh, between the two of them, 30-plus years, and myself, 15. And we're helping see those kids get off to college and see them get to this level. So uh, I think it's exciting how much support Georgia has, and I couldn't be happier to be working for an amazing state like Georgia. You know, and having the, uh, the college recruiting angle, you, you know, when you were at the Citadel, it was a very distinct type of kid that would want to go there, and you're looking for a different type now. You've got the opportunity to put you know, the college prep school kids in a vast array of different environments, whether it be a military school or an Ivy League school or, or a state school or whatever, private school, wherever you want to go. What's, what does that do for being on the other side of recruiting, being the high school coach, reaching out to the college coaches to get your kids' looks? Well, the cool thing about uh, the Terry, Allison, and myself is that many years in working at, at the college level and, and being at the college level, being on the, you know, the, the ladder or on world teams, we get to know some of these amazing coaches and work with these amazing coaches. And when we know the programs and the coaches and the facilities and what they offer academically, we can kind of help steer them in the direction of what the best fit for those kids are. Because not every single school is going to be uh, the, the right fit. Some kids want the Ivy League route. Some kids want to go to Penn State or Oklahoma State or Iowa. Um, but getting to work with these kids at a young age, we start to see where they're leaning and what they want. And then we can be honest and say, you know, we know those coaches personally. We know that program personally. And we know that's also a program that you can blossom. Uh, and I think Terry Allison's done an amazing job with, you know, in Georgia prior to me coming here. And that's just one more coach that can do that uh, to really help get more kids from high school wrestling to college wrestling. Because I think the best philosophy is the more those kids go out to college and have success, they're going to come back to the state and then make more success. And that's just going to grow our sport. Now, as far as you've had a unique journey through all of this from, from college coaching, and then you've, you've had some uh, interesting health issues not everybody really, really knows about. Now, how is that? Well, explain that a little bit and, and how the journey of becoming a coach at the high school level again has been kind of, you know, it's a balancing act. Uh, well, you know, I, I was a full-time uh, professor at the Citadel uh, and then also worked essentially full-time as the associate head wrestling coach at the Citadel. And those are a lot of hours of work, and that's a lot of time, a lot of grind. And I guess my body didn't really like that I was uh, working at 80 hours a week sometimes. And uh, I had a few health issues that resulted in uh, uh, essentially the short version. I was on dialysis for almost two years, uh, three, four days a week for four hours, get up at 4.30 in the morning so that I would never miss a practice. I'd never miss a class, uh, a transplant or two here and there, some surgeries. Uh, and, again, still never missed a you know, really uh, what I needed to be at and what I needed to do. And in that time, we had four, all, three All-Americans, I think, during that time uh, that I was going through that stuff. And no one really knew about it, but I was doing it for the kids. And I thought that was my escape from, you know, worrying about feeling sorry for myself and worrying about that, but more so how can I continue to help others uh, in spite of that. And I think it actually was amazing because a lot of the kids rally behind, you know, hey, He's been up since 4.30, and he's still here with us at 8.30 working out. So, you know, when I would ask a kid to go do something, they would be like, Shh, you know, they're not going to roll their eyes at me. And I'm, I'm in there, uh, you know, helping them cut weight at 6 o'clock in the morning sometimes, you know, after, you know, maybe doing a midnight shift on the dialysis thing. So, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, all's well. Everything's great. My health is amazing. My doctors think I'm crazy, and I'm still wrestling every day and work with these guys. But it gave me an opportunity, I think, to get a reflection of what's really important. And, and helping those kids were so important. And helping those, uh, you know, those young youth kids in those clubs go off to college and be successful, like T.J. Dudley, who went off to Nebraska. You know, Jordan Wigger had a lot of success. Um, and, and so many others that went out to, to have success here in Fargo. Uh, one went to OU and Nebraska and the Citadel. And I just, I really, I want to do that more and more and more. And I found an opportunity at Woodward Academy where they said, you know, hey, we're going to give you support. We're going to give you the funds, the means, the budget. And uh, uh, now I can actually really do what I love doing. But you know, also focus on the fact that what's important, you know, uh, quality of life, uh, you know, making sure that I don't keel over and die anytime soon so I can keep, you know, helping others. Um, and I couldn't be happier. I, I've never worked with a school that supported me so much uh, from the, the, our coaches that we have uh, to our facilities um, to, uh, again, from the, our athletic director all the way down to uh, uh, administration. They, they just want 
they see my passion in helping others and they want to help that. So um, I'm, I, I couldn't be happier. Even though it, it seems like an adjustment, I feel like I got a, I got a promotion coming to Woodward Academy. So I, I, I think you're going to be shocked and surprised when you start seeing what Woodward Academy is going to be pumping out in the next couple of years uh, on the national level uh, and on the state level because uh, things are just getting fu- uh, fun like what, what I did at the Citadel for many years uh, all the way to, you know, top 20 team before I left. So, Yeah, you just kind of... As you explain it, you just kind of gloss over a ah, transplant or two like it's no big deal. Um, this might be somewhat of a morbid question, but what would you rather not have, kidneys or wrestling? Uh, well, I've got three kidneys now, so I get to do both. So I don't know if I, I have to answer that question. You know, just pop a new piece in me, and I just keep rolling around. So it's all good. All right, we'll take that. But now, now when we get back to the community effort, we were out at, at B-Dubs a couple nights ago, and uh, you were having a conversation with one of my, my Virginia guys, a uh, guy you've got history with, Mark Strickland, and they're just talking about you. It was like one of those things where you're like, oh, wow, generally glad to see each other. And it's like you, you get that a lot in Fargo. What is it about this tournament that, as a coach, is important beyond the actual wrestling, like that, that family of people that you see once, twice a year, and it's always because of this tournament? Yeah, it's actually funny. I just bumped into Joe Privetier, who was an assistant coach with me at the Citadel, and he's coaching up uh, at NAI school, yeah, Briarcliff, and doing a great job. And it's funny, you know, I saw him, and we hung out for 23 minutes, and I said, I'll see you again next year, you know. And it's like you always know, even though we text sometimes and we are in touch, just knowing that you're always going to see those people there. And I'm going to tell you there is no tournament where you see more nationally ranked uh, and, and Olympic level and high level college athletes and college coaches and international wrestlers coming to one place once a year of all places, Fargo, North Dakota, where essentially, uh, it's, a, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's astounding how that's where this community can come together. But at the same time, if anybody doubts that Fargo is not the, the, where everyone's eyes are watching when it comes to a future for that kid's career or it just comes to, you know, coaches going, hey, that guy's putting in the work in the offseason. If, if you're here, okay, you're making you're, – you, it means wrestling's important to you. Yeah, and as we say that, we're like we're just behind Matt 1 right between the media table. And the match that we're seeing, we just saw Ryan Morningstar is in the corner, and he's coaching against Ben and Max Askren. So you see – those the giving back that you're talking about, like Askren's fighting MMA, but he's out here coaching with his kids and Team Washington. So uh, it, it's really unique to see that the, the combinations of people that are in each other's corner. Hey, it, it is amazing. Uh, as I was saying here, sitting next to me, uh, Christian Flavin, he was uh, in the Olympic Training Center uh, as an Olympic uh, resident athlete uh, as he was training for uh, you know Greco and trying to make that Olympic team. And he was the one of the assistant coaches on the Colorado team, helped Colorado win a national title. Uh, and then moved to Georgia, found out he was in the state, you know, hunted him down, talked to him. You know, we went out to dinner. I said, hey, let's do that in Georgia. And then he was my uh, head Greco coach. Uh, and uh, we, we went out and won Greco and schoolboys. And, and we got second in freestyle this year. And those are guys that like, hey, as soon as I come to the state, you got to know they're here and then involve them. And believe it or not, there's so many people that don't want to leave the sport. Even if they're not, even if they're in a club, they're running a club, they're, at, at a, they're maybe coaching in college, whatever they're doing. You never lose that love for wrestling, and I think it's so important to keep those people involved so they can give back uh, and help inspire these middle school kids, you know, and high school kids to, to say, hey, you can do it too, and hopefully you can do better than I did, you know, and that's what you want. You want those kids to have the success you may, maybe wanted to have or never got to have. So, I'm going to bring Christian in here for a moment. So let's just talk about uh, – he explained how the meeting went. Um, this guy is 100 miles an hour typically. What was your version of the uh, what transpired to him talking to you into joining Team Georgia? Oh, man. Well, the, the first time I actually met this guy, he, uh, he sent actually one of the assistant coaches from Woodward to come find me, told me, <laughs> meet me, hunted me down getting off of work and said, come meet Jeff at Longhorn. We went and sat down and we must have talked for three hours of where our hearts are at, what, where we want to be at in the future and what we want to do. And, you know, the biggest thing wrestlers can do is give back. There's too much knowledge out there. There's too much time. And, you know, we're not going to get rich here. We're not going to we're not going to get famous. It's all about making sure that we're building good men and we're putting them in a position to be successful. And and it's, it's fun to be along for the ride, to watch one of our one of our kids from Woodward to go from 0-2 to to the finals. I mean, we're we're yesterday. We're just crying our little eyes out watching this kid just wrestle. Well, I was Jeff would never cry. But, you know, we're we're just so committed and so invested in these kids. And, you know, it's it's the only way wrestlers really really get to continue that on you know because 
you know, as, as, at the end of the day, it's all about creating good men and, and creating really good character-filled men that we can send off and do well. You know? And women. Yes, and women. Of course, and women. You know, and Jeff doesn't like to make a whole lot of a big deal about, you know, what he's gone through with the transplants and, and, and the health issues, but what's it mean to see a guy, you know, do what he does every day and knowing what he's gone through? I mean, how inspiring is his story for you? You know, it, Jeff is, you know, he, he'll never let me tell this to him. So I get the chance to just love on him right now. But he uh, he absolutely just every day is, oh, I'm dragging today, you know, or I'm this. Or but he's still 100 miles an hour, loving on the kids, doing his job. You know, this morning it's, oh, man, I got to get over here and work out. And then I got to run over there and run a camp and the, or run over here and run practice and then come back and coach a kid. And then we got to do another practice. So he is nonstop, full out. And even if he's tired, even if he's hurting, even if whatever, he, you'll never see it. He'll never tell you. And, you know, when, when you watch guys that, that sacrifice so much for wrestling, it makes you want to do more, you know. And I, I'll never catch him because he's 100 miles an hour anyway, and I'm a heavyweight. So, you know, whatever. I ain't running for nothing. But he is absolutely making – he makes you want to work harder, and he makes you want to learn more. He makes you want to be a better teacher. He makes you want to be able to – a better communicator. So it's, it's great working with him. It really is. All right, guys, good luck. And, uh, I mean, granted, you don't want to necessarily want to congrats on a silver, but, hey, 0-2 to the finals, that's something to be proud of. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much, and hopefully we can uh, do an even a better improvement in Greco starting in a couple of days. Thank you. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.